Lwenny and welcome to The Social Show. My name is Virch Olwana. And as you know, The Social Show is the only show in the Southern Hemisphere dedicated to telling CSI, CSR as well as shared value stories. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. She brings good news. But do I? So we look at how uh, our corporates, government and civil society come together to tackle issues affecting our communities today. And uh, we've got a special guest today on the show who's going to be talking about something that I haven't really stretched into the beginning of this year. And I mean, we're in April now. I haven't really gone into law. I haven't gotten into how um, law has um, affected or not affected or been affected or has been implemented within CSI or has had an affiliation with the sector in some or other way. Um, but that's coming up straight after um, the news. Um, I just want to let you know that if you want to join in the conversation, please don't be afraid to go to brandlive.com.co.za um, just to, um, on, on Facebook and Twitter. I suck at this stuff, so you have to bear with me. You have to go to Brand Live uh, on Twitter. You have to go to Brand Live on Facebook. And you can just type in something and say, and hashtag social show. Um, and uh, I will definitely make it make it my priority to voice out your opinions, voice out whatever questions you may have. Um, I know a lot of the times I get questions straight after the show, which is very difficult because I can't call that the, the guest back in. I can't just let them, you know, uh, I can't really send them the questions, but at least you get a bit of the information and maybe you can talk to them um, more about the situation straight after. But let me not ramble on. Let's go straight into the news. So these are your news, news headlines. The Cookout Wind Farms invests ECD centers by upskilling local practitioners. Philanthropic funding to SA universities reaches a new highs. And the 2018 Top Empowerment Awards winners are announced. Through its fab, faglish, uh, flagship sorry, project, uh, Cook House Wind Farm has enabled 47 early childhood development practitioners in the communities of Cook House, Somerset, East Bedford and Adelaide to achieve a formal qualification. One of these uh, is Tanoka Zimkweni, an ECD a practitioner at Luvuyo Special Needs Centre and she had achieved a, in, her NQF Level 2 qualification at the end of last year and she will also receive ongoing mentorship and coaching, ensuring that the knowledge and the skills they have gained from the training applied in the classroom um, is, is, is substantial. Commenting on the impact of the program, a parent from Sobonvo Family Development Center remarked that the teachers are far more um, are far more, uh, sorry about that, the teachers are far more uh, engaging and encouraging, which has led to a marked increase in the child's eagerness to attend school. Similarly, a parent from AA2 ECD Center said that she had noticed a marked improvement in her child's language and social development through the program. In other news, South African Trust Foundation corporations and individuals are donating more to local universities more than ever before but the vast majority of funding is still being channeled to so-called traditional higher education institutions. These are the key findings in the 2017 annual survey of philanthropy in higher education ASIPE based on 2016 figures. Research is conducted under the auspice of Inyatelo, the South African Institute of Advancement with a sponsorship from the US-based Crescige Foundation. 12 of South Africa's 26 universities participated in this fourth survey and two more institutions then in the first year and and the same number as in the second and in the third years. Philanthropic income of these South African universities increased um, from 1.6 billion in 2016 to a massive boost of about 1 billion um, uh, for over a four year period. So uh, that concludes that. And lastly, in our news, the 17th annual Top Empowerment Awards was held late last week at the Emperor's Palace in Johannesburg, recognizing leadership in uh, driving the empowerment agenda in South Africa and boosting their growth and equity in the economy. Top Empowerment Business Leader of the Year Award was Poppy Koza, South, South African Civil Aviation Authority, and the Top Empowerment Business Leader of the Year Award winner, Poppy Koza, 
um, was uh, there and you can see online that she's really really excited uh, very 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 um, amazing uh, actually platform uh, these Top Empowerment Awards and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about them you can go to their website just Top Empowerment Awards um, online and uh, that concludes our news for the day The world is becoming increasingly urban. We'll need to build a new city for one million people every week to keep up or manage the growth of the cities we already have. The battle for sustainable development will be won or lost in our cities, working with the rural areas on which they depend for food and natural resources. Mayors and local governments are already taking action to win this battle. We provide basic services and work with slum dwellers and neighbourhoods to upgrade their living conditions. We improve air quality by investing in public transport and green mobility. We protect the environment through sustainable waste management. We tackle urban segregation by ensuring quality green and public spaces for all. We protect urban cultural heritage for future generations. We monitor and regulate land use to make cities more resilient to climate change and disasters. We involve our communities in planning for inclusive and sustainable urbanization. Local and regional governments seek strong partnerships with national governments to ensure enabling legal frameworks and adequate resources and play our full role in achieving Sustainable Development Goal 11, which is Sustainable Cities and Communities. The Sustainable Development Agenda depends on local governments. The jobs and economy of the future will be urban. By 2030, 60% of the global population will live in cities. To ensure decent work and economic growth, local leaders face many challenges. 40 million jobs need to be created every year for young people entering the labour market. Depending on the developing region, between 45 and 90% of workers are in the informal economy. There are 168 million children in child labour worldwide. Women's average wages are between 4 to 36% less than men's. Many local governments are already taking action, fostering community participation and social dialogue between employers and workers, including in the informal economy, adapting and responding to economic trends and challenges, promoting entrepreneurship, job-oriented policies, innovation and labour protection, and learning from one another through city-to-city -city cooperation. Local and regional governments do all this to ensure inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment and decent work for all. Which is Goal 8 of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Achieving SDG 8 depends on local governments. You're back on The Social Show with myself, Uvu Echolwana. And um, as I said in the beginning of the show, I'm going to be speaking a little bit about, uh, a, a, I think, a sector that I've neglected um, to really speak about. And I'm very excited about the person who's going to come in and speak to us on the show. In fact, I just want to share an experience that I had a while ago where I was at a launch of um, a really a, really innovative and, to me, really, what, what CSI is about, what even the space is about, what shared value is about. Um, <clears throat> the launch of Haki Legal Clinic was um, was launched about a month ago on Human Rights Day, the day before Human Rights Day, and um, it is a, a clinic that allows um, you know people who may not be able to afford um, lawyers, may not be afford, may be able to afford um, you know representation on any kind where they where they find that they're in a civil suit or something that just feels too big for them. And what they do is that they really do advise you for free, for free of charge, depending on the severity of your case. And they follow up and they're really, really amazing lawyer. I spoke to lawyer, sorry, that spoke to the CEO of Haki and I just have to commend her on her work and I'm sure we'll have her on the show. Um, the story is up on social-tv.co.za if you want to know a little bit more about Haggy and you want to get into the legal space or you are in the legal space and you're listening to the social show and you're thinking how 
do I make a difference with the skill set that I have? You know, sometimes it's not really about the money. It's not really about uh, the investing um, or donating. It's really just about your time and your skill and how you can help somebody who can't afford um, the right legal um, representation. In fact, that gives me a great segue to introduce... um, the next uh, interview that I'm going to be, you know, talking more, the next person I'm going to be speaking to, which is Mr. Malazi Molifa, the Chief Executive Officer of the Attorneys Fidelity Fund. Now, the Attorney, uh, Attorneys Fidelity Fund was set up in terms of the Attorneys Act and has been in uh, operation for about 73 years. And the primary objective of the AFF is to reimburse members of the public who have been cheated out of their monies because of theft or misappropriation committed by a attorneys in the course of practice. So it kind of works quite well if you think about Hagi and you think about AFF. I think that would be a great co- collaboration, actually. And on the line, I'm speaking to Mr. Molazi Molefe, the Chief Executive of- Officer of the Attorneys Fidelity Fund. Good morning, Mr. Molefe. Good morning, ma'am. I just need to correct that. It oh, is sorry. not Mr. Molefe. It is Mr. Sumtandele Yemane, who is the practitioner support manager at the Attorney Fidelity Fund. My 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 apologies. I, I had the, the information wrong. It's been a really crazy Thursday. Um, uh, we can still carry on with the interview? Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Sumtandele. Um, uh, thank you for your time. If we can just start off by really, you know, briefly giving a, a short history and a short sort of summary of... Um, who the attorney attorney's fidelity fund is how, how it started just sort of give us an idea for people who may not know okay the attorney's fidelity fund is an organization that exists in terms of an act and that act is the attorney's act um, what we do our objective really is to reinvest members of the public who entrusted their monies with the attorneys in the course of them providing legal services to the public member, yes. but that money goes missing at the hands of the attorney. So when it goes missing, it could be a theft by the attorney himself or herself. It could be a theft by a staff member. Yes. But as long as the money goes missing whilst entrusted with the attorney, then the member of the public can actually lodge a claim with us provided they can prove Prove. the merits of the claim that they have against that attorney or thing. Definitely. But don't you find it a bit, uh, because I'm trying to think, if I was a a civil society, a member that has been cheated of their money by an attorney or someone who understands the law, it would be quite difficult for me to prove that because obviously they have the upper hand. How do you, so what what was the kind of the nature of the claims that you've dealt with in the past? And also how have you, how have you been able to consolidate and if, if there isn't enough evidence? We have dealt with a variety of claims uh, depending on the legal services that a specific practitioner or attorney is actually providing at their firm, yeah. uh, ranging from your road accident funds, your litigation matters, your commercial matters, your conveyancing matters where people buy houses. How you can prove is that you probably would have, um, if you did an EFT when you were paying over to the attorney, mm. you will have that proof of payment that you receive from your bank to say that you paid Agreed. to a specific account. Yeah. If you made a deposit at the bank, you will have a deposit slip. Yeah. What happens then is that they will, from the investigations that we conduct when we receive a claim, we're going to look at the proof that you have at your possession. Yeah. We're going to look at the bank statement of the attorney to see what money went into the trust account and we will follow up as to what happened to the money that was received and if indeed the services that we, that should have been rendered were rendered or if they were not rendered and if the money is still there. Clearly, if the services are not rendered or they are not concluded yes. and the money is not in the account anymore, it already points out to the fact that the money is no longer misused. in the account, yes. which means it has been stolen or misappropriated. Definitely. And are courts sort of consistent in dealing with um, these kind of charges? Do they take them seriously? Is it something that um, you can actually... Uh, I'm just thinking of the process of it because it's very difficult to prove. Well, it's not that difficult to prove, but I suppose it's... It's not exactly, uh, you know. It's 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 more on. It's, it's quite a difficult thing to 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 put up. What are the courts? Uh, what is the court's consistency in that? I wouldn't really comment on the consistency, except to say that if you look at what the courts deal with. They don't necessarily do the investigations or anything. They look at what is being presented to them. 
So it is quite important that the support structure of the investigation, being your prosecutor, your investigating officers, your investigators who are involved in the process, give enough information or dig enough to actually approach the courts because the courts base their decision on what has been put in front of them. So I cannot necessarily say yeah. that there is consistency or inconsistency, but yeah. it's mainly dependent on what has been put before the court. Definitely. And do the public have to pay for these services? You don't pay anything for the services. Like I said, the only thing you need to do is to be able to prove that you entrusted your money or your property with the attorney and that it went missing. But clearly, we have ways of investigating and making sure that there are merits to the claim. And once we are satisfied that there are merits to the claim, it is a valid claim, we then determine by how much we need to come in. That is now the quantum of your claim. Because mm. you could be saying you entrusted 50000 mm. but out of that 50000 from the service that the attorney has um, already provided before the money went missing. Mm. There's money that have correctly been paid out on your behalf. Yes. So your claim is not necessarily the full 50000 that you had paid in, yeah. but a portion of it if we consider what has already been rendered and what the attorney was entitled to take from that 50000 Definitely. And of course, you guys have been around for 73 years. I'm sure there are some tips that you can give the public for, for when they acquire services from a lawyer. What are the things that you need to look out for? Um, what are the things that are the red flags um, when, when, when you are getting into a space where you need a lawyer? One of the things that a public member needs to do is to ensure that they, they have the comfort that the attorney is an attorney indeed because there are people who will pose as attorneys, but they are not attorneys. And how do you look at whether a person is an attorney or not? There is something that we call a fidelity fund certificate, which we issue to the mm. attorneys on an annual basis. It runs for the, for the period January to December of any year, and they have to apply for it on a yearly basis. They are not allowed to practice without that certificate. That's what gives them the right to practice on their own. If they don't have it and they continue to practice, they are not allowed to charge any fee. They are not allowed to charge any disbursement, yes. nothing, which means they have to provide a free service. Yes. So one of the things that a public member could look for is to ask for that the litigant certificate and check whether it is valid for that period that you want to engage the services of the attorney. The other thing that you can also do is to ask around. Mm. You need to understand, is this person really an attorney? I mean, people know who is who in, 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 in your environment. Yes. So ask around and just make sure that if you are looking for an attorney, for instance, who is going to do, to do a litigation matter for you, that attorney does provide that kind of a service. Yes. If, for instance, we look at the issue of conveyancing where people buy and sell property, not all attorneys can get involved in that space. So you need to be sure that the attorney that you are engaging with can engage in that space. So the expertise of the attorney or the firm that you are engaging is quite important for you mm -hmm. to understand. Well, the one thing that I would like to say to the public is that don't assume that mm -hmm. an attorney can provide any and all legal services. Yes. So it's important that you check. You can also feel free to phone the law society and find out what that attorney does. And in that way, you're also confirming the existence and, 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 and the, the, the right, correct standing or the rightful standing of that attorney to provide the services that you require. 100%. So just do your homework, basically. Um, and also, um, what yes. are the kind of charges, what, are, what happens, what are the consequences when an attorney has been found to have misappropriated or um, has, has been unprofessional in the way in which they have um, dealt with whoever it is that they're dealing with? Okay, I will deal with the unprofessional conduct first. Okay. And the unprofessional conduct is dealt with in terms of the regulations. And that is dealt with by the regulator being the law society. Okay. At the moment, we have four law societies in the country. We've got one in um, Pretoria, which is the law society for the northern provinces. We've got the law society in KZN, a law society in the Free State, and also in the Cape. So you, the, the, the conduct issues are dealt with by the law societies and not the Attorney's Fidelity Fund. Okay. 
However, if we now look at monies or properties that have been misappropriated, if the fund can prove the merits of the claim and pays out a claim, after the, after the, the fund has done good with the public member, then the fund goes after the attorney to try and recover what we have paid out wow. because we need to, 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 to get that money back from the attorney. Yes. But even if we do get that money back from the attorney, the member of the public has the right to actually go and open a criminal case against the attorney mm. who has misappropriated their money. Mm. So even if the fund does recover what we have paid out, that does not wipe away the criminal case Charges. because the, the crime has the crime has been committed. So paying back does not wipe away that that process of the criminal case that has been opened mm. will still continue irrespective of you having paid Your money. Back. So we do get to a point where we can, the, the law society can strike off an attorney or can even um, suspend an attorney from operation. Yes. When they are struck off, it means they cannot operate as attorneys in the country. Yes. Until they have been found to have been rehabilitated, mm. then they can apply for readmission, which is going to be um, assessed on its own merits, and they can and they can or they cannot be, be reinstated as attorneys. But yes, there is a record in the sense that they can be taken to court, they can be taken to jail, they can be struck off and they may not operate, um, continue to operate as attorneys. Wow, definitely. Okay, so uh, there's two questions that I have just to wrap up the interview. Is that the first is if I am an attorney and I want to get a fidelity fund certificate, where do I go? And the second one is if I'm a member of the public and I have been cheated of funds or I do have um, some sort of charges that I'd like to 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 raise with the AFF uh, regarding my money, where do I go? How do people get a hold of you? Okay, the fidelity fund uh, certificate is issued by the law societies. It is not issued by the Artemis Fidelity Fund. Okay. So the member of the public will have to go to the Law Society. As I've indicated, we've got the, the Law Society in Northern Provinces, yes. and that covers the Northwest, Gauteng, Limpopo, Mbumalanga. We've got the KZN Law Society, which covers the whole of the KZN. We have the Free State Law Society, which covers the whole of the Free State. And we've got the um, Cape Law Society, which covers the Western Cape, the Northern Cape, and the Eastern Cape. Yes. So depending on where the member of the public is, you will go to uh, the relevant law society to check on the issues of the Fidelity Fund Certificate. Okay. And regarding the misappropriation, you can contact the Atomist Fidelity Fund. Our website address for the in, for some information is www.feedfund, which is F-I-D-F-U-N-D dot C-O dot Z-A. Alternatively, you can call our head office in Cape Town, and the number is 021-424-5153. That is where you can get um, assistance. Thank you so much for your time, Simtandile. It's been a pleasure getting to know all this information I never knew, and I'm pretty sure there's somebody that's been helped today. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. That was Sim Tandile from the AFF Fund. And I and I really, really just want to say that um, this is something that you don't really think about when you are engaging in a space where you have to be in a... There's a case or there's a, a, a law situation. Well, I mean, somebody's misappropriated you or, or, or cheated you out of funds, especially when you're dealing with an attorney because you always feel like they probably know more, they probably could do more. And it's sort of that, that space where you just don't know enough. Um, so I think it's very important that we know about the Attorney's Fidelity Fund. It's very critical that there's more awareness around um, what they do and more awareness around how they reimburse members who have been cheated out of their monies. I mean, that's something that's very difficult to prove. That's something that's very hard to go through when you are already going through something and you need an attorney and then they still cheat you out of your fund. I can't imagine. It's like a double a double, you know, uh, negative on your part. So it's very important that we do empower and we do give a voice and put them on platforms um, because they are free. It's a free service. It's a service that will help ease your load, ease your tension. And really, it's about the public. It's about the community, which is what I'm about, which is what I believe in. So if you want to know a little bit more, as she said, you're going to go to fitfund.org. 
and you can find out a little bit more. It is going to be on our social media pages on Brand Live, as well on this, as well as uh, social show and social TV platforms. I will definitely put it out there because I think it's important, and I think uh, it's very, very um, much needed information for a lot of people. And and uh, I really do hope that it helps you or helps a family member of yours if you are listening today. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to go straight into um, things to remember. And uh, yeah, we'll be back after this. In 2016, the United Nations defined 17 goals for a sustainable development towards the protection of our planet's resources and a peaceful and prosper humanity. They build the frame for a global transformation by 2030. But this time, something is different. It was a joint approach with politics, business, academia, and NGOs working together. And BASF was apart from the beginning. We want to be a driving force in reaching the SDGs because we see chemistry as an enabler for a sustainable future. The SDGs guide us in our decision-making as we strive for solutions that have a positive impact on reaching these global goals. For example, we produce more solutions which tackle water scarcity, like water filtration and desalination. Or we support people in countries with malnutrition for example, with food fortification developments. And we are committed to save our valuable resources globally. For example, through better recycling processes and more biodegradable substances. We contribute to the SDGs and thus add value for BASF, the environment and society. For us, sustainability makes good business sense and is good for the planet. So let's come together and partner to reach the sustainable development goals. BASF, we create chemistry. CSR, you may be wondering, what is CSR? C stands for corporate. Corporates are companies or businesses such as McDonald's or Microsoft. S stands for social. Social meaning people in their communities like you and me. R stands for responsibility. Responsibility is the duty to deal with or take care of something or someone. Altogether, corporate social responsibility means for big companies to do good for the community and environment. How do companies do this? Companies need to be aware of the people around them, the planet, and their profit. This ensures that they are doing good for people, like you and me, our planet Earth, and still making enough of a profit for their company to stay sustainable. What is sustainability? Sustainability means that a company or business is able to last a long time. Let's start with people. Many companies get involved in helping service groups and organizations. For example, McDonald's restaurants donate to their local communities and support several educational, sporting, and charity programs. Coca-Cola has their own business foundation which support hospital groups, victims of disasters, educations, and more. Next, let's look at Planet. Companies such as Nike recycle their own products. In fact, Nike collects worn out shoes that are then ground up to make a material called Nike Grind, which is then used to make tennis courts, basketball courts, and even playground surfaces. Finally, we're going to look at Profit. This is so that companies make enough money for their business or cause to stay sustainable. It is very important that companies are aware of the people, our planet, and the profit to be sustainable. Since we've been looking at so many pros, it's time to look at some cons. A con is that corporate social responsibility could act as a distraction for the company, stopping them from making more money. Another con is that the process of CSR can be very time consuming and maybe expensive, taking away some of the company's profit. I believe that CSR is important for all big companies because corporate social responsibility uses a lot of time and money for their local communities. But when most companies and businesses take part in CSR, there would be more shared time and effort by each company still helping the community and environment. If every company or business is good for the people and environment, imagine how much better the world would be as a community. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I always want to engage people on what do they think about what their corporations, the big buildings that you drive past every single day, the big, the people in the suits, the people who are walking around trying to, uh, you know, um, build our economy, the entrepreneurs, um, the startups, all of the people who are getting into corporations. What do you think about how they treat your environment, your community, your spaces, you as an employee? Is there a sense of this company really cares about me? This company really wants to be a part of um, my development. And if you can't answer that, maybe 
you need to listen to things to remember things to remember is that part of the show where we just give you something to think about something to remember as you go on your day if you don't remember anything remember this When you've been around for almost 150 years, you operate in 197 countries, and you sell millions of products a day, you have opportunities and responsibilities. A responsibility to respect people and the environment, to do the right thing, to be transparent. That's why we've asked you how we can be a better business. We've listened to what you said and taken action. We turned your feedback into 38 commitments, a set of commitments you can hold us accountable to that we apply across our business. Sourcing. Manufacturing. Packaging. Marketing. Consuming. We've already come a long way, but this is just the beginning. We know there will be challenges. And while sometimes we might surprise ourselves, we won't always get it right first time. But we're determined to do more and to share our progress with you. To find out how we're doing, visit Nestle.com. So I wanted to play that video because I really find that a lot of the corporate um, videos that I find about CSI or I hear or I, I get given by different PR firms are very much um, into this idea of... Um, being responsible, right? And being accountable for the things that you are doing as a corporate entity. And Nestle is one of those companies that has had a strong policy and been quite transparent in reporting in the area of environmental sustainability, including its climate change, mitigation activities, water management practices, and really raw material sourcing. And it led, you know, it, it, it says that it has been led it, it, to achieving 97% in the environmental dimension of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which is really one of the best scores in the industry. Now, the Dow Jones Sustainability Index is based on the analysis of a company's economic, environmental and social performance, including areas such as corporate governance, uh, cl climate change, um, supply chain standards and labor practices. It's quite holistic. And I've always been uh, interested in how Nestle sort of tackles and understands that. And, and, and in my research, I found that they really, really do work um, to be not only compliant but to lead the positions in which they can which i think is very important for a corporation is that if you are good at um if what if you're in the food space i mean it would make so much sense for you to understand water management practices to understand climate change to understand raw material uh, sourcing to understand labor because we all know where so chocolate comes from so uh, i i wonder when you're sitting at, in your office, in your office desk, thinking about uh, eating that chocolate, eating, you know, drinking that milk, whatever it is that you're using from Nestle, do you really sit down and really understand that um, they have a CSI, uh, you know, uh, they have uh, agreements that they have with the world and in the spaces that they operate in? Do you know them? Do you know them and do you do you resonate with them? And if they've had mishaps, do you understand them? And does it change the fact that whether or not you buy or you don't buy? So that's what I want to leave you with today. I want you to think about it and, and, and just tweet me and let me know what you think about um, your you, the way in which the thing that you use every single day, whether it be an, a brand like Nestle or a brand like Dinar, uh, I don't know, all these different brands. I don't want to speak about different brands right now because I don't want to get into trouble. But do you actually think about the impact that they have in this society? Do you care? Do you care enough? And 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 also, if you do work for Nestle, do you is that something that works within your mind? Is it something that you know about about your company? Do you know where the CSI department is? Do you know who you can speak to about development and about climate uh, mitigation activities? Do you know where to go when you want to find out what your social performance is like and whether or not there are 
good benchmarks that measure environmental and social impact uh, of the operation of the, the company. Um, that's something I really would be interested to find out. But that concludes my show. It's been a really, really interesting, interesting Thursday. <laughs> Um, um, but we get up, we start again, and tomorrow it will begin better. I hope you have a really brilliant day. We've got one more day till the till um, the weekend, which I, for one, cannot wait for. But uh, if you want to know a little bit more about what we do, what Social Show is about, what fundamentally stands on, you can go to www.social-tv.co.za and you can find out more. You can contact us and you can let us know what you think we need to talk about, what you think, what do you think, what do you think. That is the question for the day. That's the question for the week. What do you think about the the, the corporate corporations that you deal with, you work with, you see? What do you think about what they're doing for the communities? Do you know? Do you know what they're doing for the communities? And if you don't, well, you have to tune into the social show to find out. And that concludes our show. I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same place. You're listening to brandlive.co.za.